Jai Hind dear learners, uh, in this session we are going to study about the guides and escorts. This will topic will be covered in two sessions. So, this is the first session of guides and escorts. Now, coming to the objectives of this session, after this session you will be able to know the definition of a guide and a tour escort, understand the difference between them, get details about different types of guides and their roles. You will be able to learn the techniques of guiding and understand the details of escorting a tour. Coming to the introduction part, guides and escorts in the context of Indian tourism have been a neglected lot traditionally. It is only recently since tourism has come to be recognized as a great economic asset that some slight recognition has come to them. However, the traditional mold in which guides and escorts were cast might take a little time in freeing itself for setting pace along with the growth of tourism. Here we aim to be a small effort in this direction. We have described the role of guides and escorts and discussed some modern techniques pertaining to successful professional guiding. As a professional involved with tourism, we recommend the issues discussed in this unit to be minimum standards for competence in the field of guiding or escorting a tour. You will learn more about guiding in the specialized areas later. Now, how do we define a guide or an escort? No sooner do we speak of guides, the wrinkled face of a man with some would mingle a lot of fables with few historical facts begins to emerge in the mind. Almost all of us, the tourists and the professionals in the business of tourism, have come to form a stereotype image of the guides, irrespective of the fact that guiding and escorting tours are highly professional businesses and require acquisition of special skills for successful careers. We have ventured to break these stereotypes by defining guides and escorts in the context of modern day demands of the tourism system. A careful perusal of following aspects will help you evolve the role of the professionally competent guide or an escort for yourself. Now, who is a guide? Finding an answer to this question that would be acceptable universally is a difficult task. In fact, the perceptions about guides differ from region to region. Uh, we can therefore select some of the more commonly sought traits in guides and deprived and arrive at a definition which is rather broad in scope. One good definition is that a professional guide is in varying degrees a business person, often freelance, sometimes employ a travel industry representative, a public relations representative for his or her state, city, region and country, as well as an educator, an entrepreneur, an entertainer, a public speaker, among other roles. Here it is necessary to point out that the guide may not have to perform all these roles simultaneously. It is quite possible that in specific situations his attention needs focusing on his role as an educator and an entertainer only. In other situations he may be expected to be an eloquent public speaker. The only thing we would like to lay stress on is that the guide is a public relations representative for his site, city, region, country, in all situations, all in sundry. He or she must, therefore, possess a broad based knowledge of the areas or subject being dealt with so as to be able to inform the tourists about it. Now coming to who is an escort, the scope of an escort's terrain and expertise also varies considerably. Depending upon the nature of the tour, an escort is supposed to perform the role of an accompanying manager to a subject expert. He may escort the tour to a specific piece of art, a rural area, a geographical region, a historical site, a shopping center, a metropolitan area or to a business site, etc. The role of an escort begins as soon as the tourist arrives at his place. It ends only with the departure of the tourists. During the stay of the tourists, an escort may get a few intermissions, but unlike a guide, he may not be free from his responsibilities throughout the duration of the tourist's stay. In an escorted tour, the job also involves looking after facilitation aspects like getting the custom clearance done or check-in, etc. at the airports. 
In fact, an escort is responsible for the entire group during the journey and at the destination. Now, coming to the tourist expectations, the knowledge of a tourist group's expectations from its guides, escorts is an extremely helpful tool in charting your own course of action. In fact, you must do an exercise on profiling the tourists soon after their arrival. The two main areas in this regard which deserve your attention are the tourists' demand for number one, developing an awareness and an understanding of the area they are visiting and number two, the efficient and responsible management of their program. The tourists demand from their guides or escorts accuracy with regard to knowledge of the facts, astuteness to deal with tricky situations and sympathy with regard to their own problems, however trifle in nature they may be. You should therefore be particularly thorough with facts, resourceful and full of understanding for the demands and problems of the tourists. Coming to the role of the guide, the role of the guide as it is perceived today has a history. It is in fact a mixture of two different roles, that is of the one who would traditionally lead the way on an unknown terrain, that's why the word guide, and an advisor on any kind of travel. The two roles do not always harmonize yet exist in a guide in varying proportions today. In the context of our own country, we can say that in the former role, we have location guides and in the latter, there are guides for city tours. Location. The location guides are the leaders that take the tourists into the hitherto unknown, partially known terrain. Since the nature of the terrain differs widely, the guide's role also varies. Depending upon the setting, the tourists and their purpose of visit, we can categorize location guides in India under several heads. Here we have selected the three most common types of detailed description. Firstly, the monument guides. The most commonly found guides are those who specialize in describing the monumental heritage of our country. As a matter of fact, guides available at these monuments have come to a project a particular perception about the guides in India. Most of those guides lack a proper historical understanding of the architectural wealth of the region where they operate. We have given the role model of such a guide in various other units which can be referred later on. It will be sufficient here to list the abilities of such a guide as now the foremost in this list is obviously the requirement of adequate knowledge of the history of the region so as to be able to describe the monument in perspective. Without history, the monument will not speak. It's the guide who speaks on behalf of the monument regarding its history and thereby catches the attention of the tourists. The guide should be well versed with the stylistic and architectural details of the monument. All historical facts about the monument such as the date of of its construction, the agency responsible for construction, the time taken, the design and the architect, the purpose of the monument etc. should all be known to the guide. The guide should be able to shift fables from history. Though it is not suggested that the anecdotal details should be rejected, they are certainly be kept at deep discount. The language used, the commentary used should portray more of the knowledge of the history rather than the anecdotes. Anecdotes are important, but they should only be a value addition. The guide should not construct history on its own in the absence of firm evidence. Then comes the museum guides. Uh, the museums is a fantastic place for a guide to describe. Uh, it is here that the role of the guides both as an educator, as an entertainer comes to fruition. We have given these details in description of a museum as a guide and would here we list a few prerequisites. As a tourist guide or otherwise also when you take visitors to a museum, it is important for you to know the variety and the range of collections housed there. This information is of immense help to you in catering to the tourist who may not have common taste for all things kept in the museum. On the contrary, it is most often the case that there are many different interests in a group of tourists as their actual count. In such situations, the variety and the range of your knowledge regarding the exhibits of a museum will stand you in good stead. 
You will also find uh, this information handy in deciding to curtail or extend the visit of the group to a museum and may at times reap rich dividends if you succeed in evoking the appreciation of the tourists for the varieties and the artistic merit of the exhibits. We shall therefore insist that you collect detailed information about the museum and arrange this information to convenient categories. Occasionally sift your information and regularly update your information. Besides, when you guide visitors to a museum, you should also make sure how much time the visitor has to spend there and their areas of interest. Accordingly, you can adjust your commentary on exhibits and decide that to show gloss over or give a passing reference only. Now, wildlife guides. Wildlife tourism is potentially one of the most viable and economically rewarding area of tourism. Hence, it is imperative on tourism professional and more so on a wildlife guide or escort to understand its intricacies and use this information to his or her fullest advantage. Most of the tourists visiting a wildlife area are innocent and therefore willing to learn from you and follow your instructions. Unlike several other situations, as a wildlife guide or escort, you are located in an enviably privileged position. But this simultaneously entails upon you the additional responsibility of being thoroughly familiar with the peculiar features of wildlife tourism. Therefore, you should understand the following problems, problem areas in wildlife tourism. Number one of the problem areas are, number one is timing. The preserves are open during day hours only and thereby eliminating the possibilities of evening or night watch of the animals. Then comes accessibility. Not many places are easily accessible nor are there adequate preparations made. The two more important aspects on which we would like to pay greater attention are in the commentary for the tour and useful material and travel tips to be given to the tourists. Now coming to city tour. For a city tour, the following aspects are to be considered. Number one, you must profile the group of tourists who are intending to visit the wildlife preserve by reading carefully their purpose of travel, whether they are traveling for recreation or relaxation or study of nature, etc. Then the behavioral characteristics of the tourists. Now that everything is ready, the coach departs, of course. Here you must remember that the length of the trip should not be very taxing physically. Depends on the number of people and the type of people that are in your group. The age group specifically matters a lot. The gender matters a lot. So it should not be a taxing, uh, physically taxing experience while the people are on the coach. There should be adequate stops during the trip to give physical relaxation. Sufficient time should be made available for shopping and you must take care of a few problem spots such as sudden illness to a tourist or say a loss of baggage, loss of passport, loss of money or missing tour members. A uh, lot of people, academicians, we all say that guiding is a technique. Now in modern day tourism, the job of guiding is a technique. You should acquire the skill in conformity with your specific requirements. In the session which is following now, we shall deal with the general trails of the technique of guiding. First thing is leadership. It has been rightly said by Kathleen Pond, most people have a fairly well defined image of the ideal tour guide. The tour guide is supposed to be outgoing, affable, well informed and enthusiastic. Certainly, the best guides are an electric composite of positive personality traits. You will appreciate that all the personality limits stated above suggest one specific feature that is the leadership quality. This is one of the most effective social limits a guide must possess to become successful in his trade. What does leadership require? Leadership requires enthusiasm, leadership requires self-confidence, leadership requires proactive nature, leadership requires sensitivity, leadership requires flexibility, 
leadership requires decisiveness, a person has to be decisive because he is leading the entire tour. A leader is supposed to have a good sense of humor, otherwise the monotonous commentary can be quite boring. So, if you put in some anecdotes, some sense of humor in between your commentary, that can be of a great reprieve to the entire group. Some of these traits are natural gifts, but yes, most of them can be acquired as skills. Uh, here we would like to emphasize that the traits listed here do not lend themselves to any kind of measure. They can be acquired with practice. A judicious mix of these traits in any individual's personality is purely a personal matter. Then comes after leadership, factual knowledge. Knowledge of a wide array of subjects is absolutely essential for the persons involved in guiding the tours. However, subject matter differ for guides from region to region. Therefore, local educational programs should be paid careful attention. Some of the common areas, the knowledge about which cannot be ignored by any guide are number one, the geography and the topography. A guide has to be very, very well versed in the geographical conditions and the topography of the place that he is presenting to the tourists. Then comes the history, culture and religion, uh, specifically in context to India. India is a 10,000 year old civilization country. It is famous for its cultural aspects. Hence, for any guide to be successful in India, he or she has to have adequate and deep knowledge about the history of the place that he or she is talking about, about the culture of that place or the region and of course, the various knowledge about religion because India is a multi-religion uh, country. India is full of folklore, so having adequate knowledge of folklore is a value addition to the uh, guide's commentary. Folklore is of course historical in nature and hence it attracts a lot of attention uh, when the folklore is being told to the tourists. More than the monument, I would say it is a folklore, it is a history which is narrated to the tourists that attract the tourists. Then the guide is supposed to know about the economy and the industry of the region. And of course, lastly, last not but the least, the travel and tourism of that particular area. It can be said that a guide is in fact a representative of the place he chose to work. He should therefore be culturally literate because tourists can ask a guide questions about several related or even unrelated aspects of the region to their visit. A guide may be asked a question from anywhere and from everywhere and everybody expects that the guide should know each and every bit of it. It should be emphasized here that authenticity of information passed on to the tourists by the guide is a key factor in the success of his career. In this era of internet, everybody has access to various uh, online tools and devices and they can cross check the facts and figures or whatever narration has been given by the tourists. So, it is very important that a guide should always talk with authenticity information only and not talk haywire or with the hearsay. Most of the tourists are instinctively drawn to and trust guides who are genuine and who have an honest, open aura about them. Gone are the eras when you could say anything and make a fool of the tourists by narrating any false narration. Nowadays, every tourist, every group wants authentic information about whatever they are seeing or watching or are being told about. Next comes uh, presentation. The guide has only two basic tools to work with in his profession, the voice and the body language. It is therefore essential that the presentation skill of the guide is tuned perfectly. For this, you are supposed to have good voice modulation, your pitch is to be controlled high or low as per the emphasis that you want to lay upon during your commentary. And of course, your body language has to be very positive, it should not be too much authoritative, it should be welcoming in nature, it should not be that body language should not be such that it demeans uh, you or the region or the culture of the place and it should not be detrimental to the cause of guiding as such. For this, you can always stand in front of mirror, 
read a newspaper or anything you wish to and do practice with lots of voice modulation and good body language. Presentation uh, can also be an engaging and enjoyable experience. Since presentation by guide is a simpler affair than lecturing, it contains enormous possibilities for effective and captivating communication. The effectiveness and captivating nature of the communication of the guide is one thing which attracts the tourists the most and it is one thing which will make you as a good guide with great future prospects. Why will people listen to you? It is an important question. You want to say anything, why should people listen to you? So for that, you to make people listen to you, you have to be very lively, you have to be delightful, you have to be vivid in descriptions, you have to be simple with language, it is not a language test that you are giving. Your language should be as simple as possible so that everybody understands what you are trying to project and say and you should be comfortable with the audience and of course with the topic. Your presentation must make the listener believe that what they hear is what they see. In the kind of presentation a guide offers, voice plays a very crucial role in making it convincing and impressive. The voice, writes Kathleen Pond, is the speaker's most valuable commodity and like a musical instrument, it must be cared for and kept in tune. You must remember that the tourists would often listen to your voice for eight or more hours a day. So it's very important that you keep very, you take very good care of your voice. Now coming to escorting a tour, we have just seen uh, what guiding means all about in brief. Now we will discuss about escorting. Escorting a tour involves careful preparation and planning. The escort has to keep himself ready for special situations that may arise from unforeseen circumstances. We shall discuss each of these aspects separately in the coming session. Number one, planning. Planning has today become almost a, a scientific operation. The tour escort therefore should know the rate of success with similar tours in the past, how to broaden the scope of the tour with the help of the experiences gathered by others and the problem areas of the tour to work out the remedies. It needs to be emphasized that while planning a tour, the escort must live the tour day by day. He or she should make special care of the following areas. Number one, scheduling. It is a combination of factors with some uncertain variables. The central idea is to look for the right place at the right time for the right people at the right price. Events. The events to be covered on a tour should be so planned as to suit the taste of most of the tourists. No event should offend anyone. All the events should keep cost factor into focus. Then comes the variables like weather, unforeseen occurrences, transport upsets, etc. Now all these are very important variables which must find a place into a planning. This will enable you to keep alternatives handy and save the tour. Coming to preparation. Advanced preparation is an essential feature of successful escorting. Therefore, as an escort, you must know what information is needed in connection with the tour and where to get that from. Understand what items become part of your preparations for the tour, how to obtain them. Appreciate the needs of the tour members and how best to meet them. And know what basic information needs to be supplied to the tour members. All successful tours tell the same story, that is good preparation. Good preparation leads to good execution. As an instance, you may pay attention to the following details in the preparatory stage. Number one, have a checklist. Travel checklists are a very useful tool for your successful preparation. You may not forget even the smallest item details pertaining to the tour if you have a properly drafted checklist. Then comes tour itinerary. We emphasize that you mentally tour for the entire route, all the places and plan all possible events in scrupulous details. Then comes the most important part that is commentary. Commentary is a very, very important part though it has been often neglected. 
but we would emphasize that it is a very important aspect of escorting a tour. A crisp, informative, delightful commentary punctuated with humor is a sure success, is a sure key to the success of the tour. Then comes the travel tips, uh, vital for the tour party, it must contain those little tips which can make or mar the tour. The tourists are appreciative of such help and their gratitude is your final reward. Uh, to sum up, uh, in this session we have seen that guiding and escorting are uh, the most exciting features of tourism profession. These are the roles that are truly the soul of the tour. The guides and escorts are in fact an amalgam of several independent roles. Thus, while they retain a part of these individual roles such as that of an entertainer, an educator or even a public relations man to their region or place, they are never to be stereotyped into anyone exclusively. They are an amalgamation of everyone. They retain an independent identity of their own. It is this identity that makes them such lively and delightful persons in the perceptions of the tourists. Thank you learners. Have a great learning. Jai Hind.